Hey everybody, today is Mutant Day. We'll be talking, uh, all three of our topics today are going to be dealing with mutants, specifically the mutants in the Marvel Universe, where you get more mutant stories. DC, you get random metahuman or what have you, but all mutants. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the plausibility of mutations in real life. This was a conversation that I had with a friend yesterday during lunch. Um, talking about what mutations would be possible here as opposed to in the Marvel Universe. Some would be realistic, some are kind of silly. Uh, on the plausible, possible side, you get somebody like Wolverine. His primary power, of course, is his healing factor. So that's something that you know I could easily see someone having and more white blood cells, easier to clot, more red blood cells, what have you. That's not too out of the ordinary, so a healing factor I'll get. It's not going to be the type of thing where you can instantly heal from a gunshot wound, but, you know, being able to heal quicker, even to, you know, a superhuman rate, sure. Um, his claws, the bone claws specifically, before he gets the metal claws. I will accept that he could have bone spurs, that he could have some sort of hypercalcification, but not that they would be extendable or retractable. Um, Beast is probably one of the most realistic, I guess the most possible. All you got here is increased strength. Uh, that would come from increased levels of testosterone and HGH. Um, you're going to have things like uh, excessive hair growth, which would be pretty normal. Um, what else? Skin discoloration. That's a fairly normal thing. Maybe not the deep blue hue that you often see on his secondary uh, mutation, but skin discoloration is fine. Um, even his kind of dexterous feet, um, that's common in a lot of primates. So I can say that yes, Beast um, is entirely possible. Good for Beast. Iceman. Now this one is going to be nowhere near the extent of his true powers, but if you try to make it a more realistic thing, he would at most have a increased tolerance for cold. Uh, perhaps a larger, stronger heart, um, better circulation, especially through the extremities, and perhaps even a higher iron content in his blood, which makes him able to withstand cold man as opposed to ice man. There's no freezing the moisture in the air around you to become encased in a, a solid you know, ice sheath. Um, Nightcrawler. He could have a lot of the same physical mutations as Beast, um, even with the addition of a tail, vestigial tails um, are not uncommon, I guess, in humans. They're not like super common. Um, so why not say he's going to a lower order primate, he's going to go to a monkey level um, to get the tail. So that's fine. Teleportation, no way in hell. Things that are completely impossible. Cyclops, there's, there's nothing in the body where you're going to be able to mutate and shoot laser beams out your eyes. Uh, one of the points we kind of discussed to help describe how it would be possible uh, would be that he would absorb solar radiation, I guess ultraviolet rays or something, in a way that other people couldn't, and you'd have to expel the energy somehow. If you're hypersensitive or hyper-absorbing uh, ultraviolet rays, you would either be a very pale guy or skin cancer dude, you would not be shooting laser beams out your eye no matter what. Um, Professor X, no, there is no telepathy. Magneto, nope, at most. He would have a higher on iron content in his blood which make him more magnetic, but it would not give him the ability to warp magnetic uh, electromagnetic fields at all. That'd be just out of the question. Kitty Pride, um, the most you can do to change your density would be to you know, contract your muscles that make you more dense, but there's no way for you to become intangible. Sorry, no kidding. Basically, some degree of physical mutation would be plausible. Um, something kind of believable, but any energy powers, uh, transformations, psychic abilities, uh, anything like that, are things that I can't consider realistic mutations. Uh, not that it matters much, because you know it is a comic book, but these are the kind of conversations that nerds have while eating tacos. Um, this conversation ties into the next two ideas, 
one is my view of the Marvel Universe and how mutants fit into it, and the other one is a, another terrible character idea. Starting with my idea of the Marvel Universe. I tend to believe, and this has been directly contradicted by Marvel themselves, so this is just, just my belief, that everyone of note, everyone who has an exceptional ability of any kind in the Marvel Universe is a mutant. Now bear with me. Um, Spider-Man. Even before he was bitten by the spider, I believe he was a mutant. Because normally if you're going to get bitten by a radioactive spider, the best you could hope for is just an itchy spot on your hand, but it's quite likely that you could have necrotic flesh, that you would have radiation sickness, that you would just flat out die. Um, I believe that there was some sort of genetic, excuse me, genetic variation in Peter Parker that allowed him to metabolize the spider's radioactive venom, absorb some of its DNA, and attach it to his DNA as a kind of a secondary mutation and the allowance for further mutation. But the original mutation allowed him to survive the bite. Um, similar to that, the Fantastic Four. If you get blasted by cosmic rays, it's essentially radiation therapy, you know, and radiation and chemo are terrible things to go through if you have cancer because sometimes the cure is as bad as the disease. Um, you're going to suffer from skin problems, sores, swelling, infertility, cancer, heart disease, radiation sickness, and eventually death. But Reed Richards, Sue Storm, Johnny Storm, Ben Grimm, they all, what a coincidence, happen to have some sort of genetic markers which allowed them to absorb whatever miscellaneous cosmic rays that hit them and redirect those as opposed to causing uh, cancer cells to grow to affect their skin cells, musculature, um, what have you, to give them the powers that they had. And this is where I start to stretch the idea a little bit, but this is where I kind of really push it. Tony Stark, mutant. Um, I guess you can apply the same thing to Reed Richards, Doctor Doom, and anybody of truly superhuman intellect in the Marvel Universe. These guys are all thinking at orders of magnitude higher than everybody else in the world. So I believe their mutation is either slightly larger brains, uh, access to more portions of their brain, just a hypersensitive nervous system which allows them to react more quickly. The fact that they can build these incredible suits of armor, that they can have advanced intelligence, uh, pardon me, advanced uh, artificial intelligence like uh, Ultron and Jocasta and all this sort of stuff. The fact that these motherfuckers are making multiple time machines, independent of one another, just time machines. That's not normal human thinking. That's not a normal human brain. That's a mutant brain. Um, Doctor Strange. Another kind of a logical leap here. Um, if magic exists in the Marvel Universe and everyone can be affected by it, then all humans can interact with magic at some level even if they are just the victims of it. Some folks, though, uh, people like Jennifer Kale, um, have natural affinities for magic. Doctor Strange, while it took him a while to develop his actual skills, seems to have this sort of natural affinity for magic that uh, definitely was unlocked by his studies. But if someone like random person, Peter Parker, were to learn all the same things that Doctor Strange learned, had all the studies, he probably wouldn't be as powerful a sorcerer as Doctor Strange because of his natural affinity for magic. Magic is shaky, it's kind of a um, get out of story jail free card, so take it with a grain of salt, but I think, you know, I'm still going to count this one. Kurt Connors, Steve Rogers, Hank Pym, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, Cloak, Dagger, the list goes on. In my book, all of them before any secondary changes, mutants from birth. Finally, uh, tying the two previous thoughts together into one freaky little ball, plausible physical mutations and the proliferation of mutants in the Marvel Universe. Once again, another terrible character idea coming up here. In adult humans, the most common form of mutation is sadly cancer. Um, we're back in the Marvel Universe, and I, I know this is a cellular mutation as opposed to a genetic mutation, but we're going to, you know, since we're in the Marvel U, we're going to roll with it. 
I read a number of years back that gay men tend to uh, have higher rates of uh, colon cancer and I believe prostate cancer than women or heterosexual men. So putting these two things together in the Marvel Universe, um, I combined the two into the colorectal X-Men. Essentially, uh, whatever caused these genetic mutations, which would have normally led to a cancer, have actually led to uh, the secondary mutations like you see in the X-Men. Uh, they normally onset at adolescence through some sort of trauma, what have you. But instead of being generalized, they are localized in the ass. Um, it'd be kind of neat to see all the X-Men with powers coming out their butts. Cyclops, you know, would become Brown Eye, and he would, you know, fire colonic blasts. Um, I don't know, maybe Wolverine would have the eternally supple sphincter. I don't know what his little power would be. Um, Colossus's lower intestine would just be just a shiny metal tube. He could go Phoom! every time he pooped. Maybe it'd sound like a tuba. No. Um, Beast would just have a very hairy butt. Whatever. Uh, Cypher. Uh, would be like Jim Carrey in Ace Ventura when he's talking to Tone Loke, you know, with his butt cheeks. He could speak any language, but only when he's talking out his ass. Um, these are all terrible ideas. Uh, they're all really stupid mutants, just random butt cancer jokes, essentially. Um, but I'm sure that there are much worse that you guys could all come up with. I think that's all for today. I think we ended on a strong note. If everything is going the way I think it will, tomorrow we'll probably um, talk about the withholding of knowledge within comic book universes. How all the superhumans have this great technology, wisdom, what have you, and they don't share it with anybody. And a new character uh, called Prometheus, who would be the guy who would actually take that knowledge, share it with the general populace, and how that would affect the world. If everybody had teleporters, if everybody had super hyper-intelligent you know, computers, if everybody had helicarriers and all these sorts of cloning technology and, you know. Um, until next time, I hope you guys all have a good day. Feel free to leave your own terrible ideas in the uh, comments below or perhaps in a video response. Until next time, have a good day.